Hello and welcome to Cheeky Tech. Yes, it's September 2018. Where has this month gone and how, where has this year gone? Um, it's flying by. It's been brought to my attention that two years ago um, was when I did one of my first videos and I laid the baseboards down and I started doing the track. Um, so I thought it'd be really interesting, uh, it'd be a two year sort of milestone, to look back at where the layout started and what inspired me and to where it is today. So what I've done, I've put some stills together and a little bit of uh, footage, the back of this video, so you can have a little check out um, regression from then to now, and I thought it's really interesting. I think it showcases your modeling and how we've developed, especially for me, uh, it's amazing. Um, but coming up next, we've got um, how to weather uh, a loco. I've done a couple of locos now, um, and I just want to showcase uh, one, of the one of the locos that I've done. Um, I haven't gone into detail how I weather it, just explained what, what techniques I used and how I've done it. Uh, so I haven't done a full footage fast forward thing. Um, but just after that, you'll see how to lubricate and oil you, the loco and maintain it. I think that's very important when we use do any spraying, anything like that. So that's a really good watch, uh, which is coming up next. But just after that, I've got another little project that you should check out. And that's a couple more little wagons. I've done some more projects on them. Uh, so I've got two more projects on uh, that I've just finished. And um, they're real good watches. So just follow through and then you'll get through to um, the looking back of two years ago. So enjoy, I shall stop rabbling and uh, we'll go down to the bench and see our weathered loco. So one of the things I've been up to this month, I've been weathering my little 08 shunter um, and I'll show you in a second. Um, there is a great video which is underneath the link in the, in the description and it'll show you um, some of the work that I actually uh, techniques I used to actually weather it which I use on pretty much all the weathering that I do whether it be trains or wagons and um, I've got more videos to come on that so um, it's something I'm learning but I'm not going to do videos until I've mastered it or worked out a system that works that's easy and not complex because I don't want to overcomplicate things uh, and sort of scare people away. So um, it's some, a technique that I'm learning and um, I certainly enjoy it by far. So as you can see, our little shunter um, has got some like great little weathering details. Again, the um, all the, um, uh, the dust and rusty sort of stuff is done by using um, a brown wash, a dark wash. This was actually what I got free from a magazine uh, when I went to a show uh, a long time ago and uh, it's outlasting me very well. And what I do is dip the brush in that and then just add a touch of weathering powders, whether it be rust, black or um, sand or anything like that. And of course they then make like a wet pasty powder and then I brush them on and then I get a cotton bud and wipe them off. And uh, you get this sort of nice little effect there. Um, I have been playing with um, the decal fix, which again is it's 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 really good. It's actually for putting transfers on, which you can see these uh, BR stickers and things, which I use to do. Um, but I then sort of dipped a bit of weathering powders in, in it as well, and that sort of makes a nice little paste for painting. So again, I'm just trying different techniques, um, having a bit of fun with it. Um, the white faded uh, is a, a technique that uh, Richard at Everhard Junction used and uh, has a video on how to do that and I strongly recommend you watch that video because uh, it has all the techniques um, that Richard used. And it's just dry brushing using um, the original paint and uh, white paint. I just used enamels and sort of uh, dotted it all down and sort of added it to it, uh, to the loco and sort of just faded it in different places and uh, certainly got some great effects and details. This was the gray and black loco I used to have, uh, and I wanted another BR blue, uh, a bit of a camera shake there, sorry. So this is uh, what I've been up to. Um, certainly really happy now. I've got three blue shunters, um, them two there, and I've got the one that's in the yard in there that's being repaired with the engine hanging off. Let's oh, see there, that one there. Let's put that back on. So of course, functionality is very important. Um, if you do any spray work to your loco or any uh, matte varnish or anything like that, make sure you clean the pickups afterwards. Um, I've noticed this one here is causing a few issues. Let's do it forwards actually. Uh, so let's just put it forwards. 
Um, so there she's going now. Um, I know the track is very clean there. And there you go. Um, I know the track is very clean. Um, it's, so it's not the track itself. It's just some of the pickups are causing it to it to um, not work properly. Um, let's do it backwards. So yeah, that's working good. Yeah, you see, so that is the issue. Um, it's it's a it's just pickups on the loco. Uh, they need real good cleaning, and um, I think it's about time we take the bottom off and have a look at it. Um, so I just stopped it there, so I can have a look. So what we're going to do? Um, I bring the, the loco to the workbench, and we'll take off this bottom plate underneath here by undoing these two screws. So I'll show you how to do that and how to get to these two little springs really simple and easy without taking any of the bodywork off. Um, so we don't need to take any of the bodywork off to do this. Um, and it will run absolutely superbly once we've done it. Right then, let's go to the workbench. Right, undo that screw there. Undo that screw there. That is the only two screws that you will need to undo to access the, um, the copper strips underneath that touch the wheels. Let's put that to one side. And then you can see all the running gear there. Now to get that bit there out, these two little sand tubs are the ones, the sand pipes, are the things that keep that little plastic retainer in. So turn it sideways. Uh, just checking I've got you all in camera and what you do is you just gently prise that one underneath there and again same on this side just gently they're not fixed in they're just like little little slots which I'll show you underneath and you go these little pins locate there's four little pins and they locate in the bottom of the loco and it's the sand pipes that hold hold all that in so once you do that do the same on the other side just pop out they're not stuck in as I say and they just gently come out I'm not putting any force on this screwdriver there we go so that's just going to keep them one's that side one's the other side keep them so I know which is which and there's your axles the axles just pull out keep the axles to one side and then you have this little bit I'm going to wire, uh, grease it all up as well so You've got the little bit in the middle which is the spring there's a bit of tension so i'm now going to get that out and then you can see if you look closely to the wheels you can see just inside there the copper strips just there are covered in muck and i'm going to clean them up on all these just going to get a bit of cotton bud in there and then um, we'll put it all back together again and it is as simple as that so let me just clean that up and put it all back together Now is to stick it all back together again. So for oiling up the loco or lubricating it, we remove these panel underneath here by taking out these two screws, just gently lifting off the bottom plate and you can see here you've got your gears just add a synthetic white gear grease uh, you can buy this from remote control model shops or you can buy it readily on the internet um, through eBay 
um, Amazon, all them kind of outlets. Um, it's just synthetic white gear grease, that's what it is. Uh, don't use um, Vaseline because Vaseline is a petroleum jelly and it will contaminate the gears which cracks the plastic and it also sticks the gears together so really wouldn't advise that. Always stick with this stuff. Um, as for the oil on here, you can see I've got some oil on here. I use this handy lubricant, it's general purpose and this is the equivalent to sewing machine oil um, and it's very fine, very refined and it's very thin. So what I do is put a little bit in the lid, I'll take a screwdriver and I just drop a few drops into the chassis uh, on the running gear there and on the little points there, the little arms and that sort of thing and I run it all in. Once I've got uh, oil on there, I take off any excess that's dribbling just to make sure it keeps contained within the loco. Put the bottom plate back on and once we've nipped that back on, I would then stand this on some running wheels with a cloth underneath on a test piece of track. And I'd run that for probably about just five minutes, um, a steady pace, just to throw any oil or bits and pieces out so it doesn't go all over the track. And realistically, that is your loco ready to go back onto the track. Okay, so we returned it from the workbench. As you saw, we cleaned it all up underneath. I've actually done this loco here as well, and so these are both done now. And straight away, I'm just gonna stick it on one, on, put them both on reverse, um, so we'll just see what they do. Um, there we go, just head down one. So the green one's just on, literally crawl. It is, I think I'll just put it up one, actually, on the green one. Uh, so there we go. Um, you can see the, the difference is just making it uh, running beautifully. I'm going to do the green one forward, so I'm just going to reverse that. It hasn't stopped. There we go. Then we'll take it back out of the shot so you can see the blue one. So they're running absolutely lovely. They're doing just as we want. I'll just bring the blue one forward. So that will now slow and then come forward. And she's running beautifully now after that little clean. Um, certainly does the trick and um, it really does help your locos uh, once you've done a respray. And keep them clean they'll go over your points and there'll be no problems I'll do a little test down on the points there just to do a final test so you can see what it's like there we go and she's running beautifully I've now got all my uh, OH running perfectly now I'll run that right slow there there we go so a good way of servicing your locos and keeping them running, uh, especially these 08s, little gronks, they do need a little bit of servicing, so uh, something I actually forgot to do. The real test. There we go. So anyway, let's um, carry on with some other bits and see what else we've been up to. So I've been looking at my magic book for inspiration and I came across this picture of some uh, fuel tankers. And I really like the way they look. They look really cool. And um, I thought that would be a great technique to add to my tankers that originally look something like that. Uh, not as big as these ones. And this is a good book. It shows you uh, prototypical markings and all the bits that should be on a tanker. And it's a load of stuff in here. Literally just bits and pieces, all different tankers, black ones all that kind of thing, um, it's all different ones. Um, so going back to this page here, uh, I see that picture there, I thought it'd be good to incorporate on my little tankers. Now I brought the old uh, Great Western Pannier tank up on this one, and uh, I sort of show you my, my little tankers that I've done. Now these are done with the same weathering techniques as I do, and you'll see this throughout the whole of this video, um, the same thing I've done, and the effect is just amazing. Um, and again, I've just mapped sealed it and uh, matte varnish just to give that dull effect and sort of cover in all the uh, powders now when i finished them uh, originally they're all quite the tanks were really shiny they're real gloss look to them um, and that was just using weathering powders and the weather wash um, but i just let them dry and it say it stayed quite shiny but with that matte finish on top it just blasts it all back down and you get this lovely effect and i can touch these now none of that comes off it's all sealed in um, and I really like the way they look they look quite tasty I must say um, I'm really getting into this weathering of 
uh, tanks and uh, wagons and all my trains and locos it's starting to really take a hold of me in this big project so there you go that is our them tankers or that that's these ones that i finished uh, and you saw i did the box wagons uh, in a previous video uh, again using the same techniques and uh, i think they look amazing by far so let's take the book out of the way and send that one on its journey so there we go Uh, as I explained, these are the little wagons that I've been tarting up. Now, I've been buying these on eBay really cheaply. These are Backman wagons. Um, that one there is the original in the middle. And then I've just, uh, that one there was blue and that one there was black. And it had all molded plastic and melted stuff inside it, which I cleaned out. And uh, I've then resprayed it, obviously, because it was all silver originally. But um, I noticed this was a um, rust color inside. So I just used car sprays to add the same touch and then painted the ends on yellow that you see there. Um, by looking at research, these were used sort of 95 onwards um, and would fit in with a coal sector and that kind of thing. So they look quite nice. I've got my own little unique wagons and I've now got a nice little set. Um, you think these are about £24 each and I've paid sort of £6, £8, £5 that kind of thing for these and I'm really happy the way these are turned out um, yeah I'm really happy with these and they certainly look really good
Well, I think that's time to close the book and uh, finish off this video. Um, been a busy one. I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this. There's been lots of little projects I've been involved in, whether it be the wagons that I've updated. I've done loads and loads of wagons at the moment. Um, and I really enjoyed doing it. And I say I'm now venturing to doing locos and um, it's really biting into me. I'm really enjoying it. And it's a technique that I want to share with you guys once I've, uh, as I said earlier, mastered a few more techniques uh, that are quite easy and not too complicated. Because I find uh, sometimes all these things are a bit, I don't want to touch that, don't want to do that. But it's actually good to see someone tackling and having a dive and ruining their locos. But I think I've done a good job, I don't think I've ruined anything. It all comes off and I can wash it off, so I'm not really that panicky. And that's what you've got to remember. Anyway, so with that said, um, don't forget the Great Model Railway Challenge. It's in a lot of magazines uh, and it's all starting to come on TV. So do enjoy that. And uh, there's lots of it, lots of news flying around. Don't forget if you want to get in touch with me, drop me your, a, a note or a story or tell me some stuff that's going on or any problems you're having with your layout. I'm sure I can share that with other guys with a great fountain of knowledge that are out there. So, um, you know, I'm happy to try and help anybody that I'm you know they're struggling um, you can contact me through um, cheekytech.com my website and uh, that's got a, my my Twitter platform or you can contact me through messenger uh, just drop me a note anyway take care of yourselves guys and uh, again happy modeling and uh, look after yourselves and I shall catch you all very soon cheerio I think it's time for the bourbon biscuits and some tea